This episode of Coffee with a CMO, we're actually going to break the rules a little bit and have a CEO. He's here right now. Uh, it's Mike Volpe. Mike was a CMO at HubSpot, CMO at Cyber Reason, and he's now going to be the CEO of Lola. But we figured we'd get him in real quick to do one last CMO party with him before uh, he moves on. And Mike's a good friend uh, of mine, a mentor, an advisor. He beats me up a lot. Uh, and he helped us out a lot at Drift. So I'm super excited to have this conversation and go get a coffee with Mike. Dude, I'm in, I'm in your base, man. What are you really? talking about? He's here. When I've talked with the finance team about what they're doing for corporate travel. You're here? I'm still on my software. This guy gets are a CEO. You, He's not even a real CEO yet. He doesn't no, even call no, me anymore. No, I'm, I'm, unemployed. He's I'm unemployed. unemployed as of six minutes, six hours from now. Unbelievable. And Can't I'm, even get a call. I'm, I'm, I'm outside. I'm ready. Yeah. He's drift entrepreneurial residents until Wednesday. Ooh! Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Uh, so I have a funny, <laughs> I have a funny question. <laughs> you, why, why are you, why is Mac versus PC such a big thing? We're gonna, you're gonna start with that. Yeah, that's what I want to start, start with. with yes. That. Yeah. This is the last thing you texted me. You said, I'm, I'm starting a new job, which we're gonna talk about. Yeah. But you said, I feel like I need to switch over to Mac. Well, there's zero PC users at, at Lola.com, okay. my new company. Okay. And um, zero. And I've just always used a PC. I don't know why. It's funny because I used a Mac in college. And then my first job. Um, Hold on. What year was that? <laughs> Back in like the 80s. Okay, so it's not like you had like the new MacBook Air at college. and I like, got the first, so I actually had, it was a MacBook, um, I think it was called a 165C. Mm. It was the first Mac uh, laptop that had a color screen. And it was funny because the thing was like this big, but the screen was like this big because like they couldn't afford to put like a big color. So I had yeah. the first color screen yeah. Mac laptop, yeah. which you don't remember this, but now you have like the air, it's like really thin. Mm. That a laptop was like an inch and a half thick back then. Yeah. It was yeah. like a brick that you carried around in your backpack. So I, so anyway, so I used a Mac in college. My first job was in investment banking. Right. And I lived in Excel right. for 60 to 80 hours a week. Right. And Excel is has was much better than on the PC than on the Mac, and that's even true to some degree today. Um, and I just, I just after that, I just never switched. I guess I got really good at, at Excel on the PC, and just you know whatever. And the reality is today, ninety percent of what I do is in a browser, right? Yeah. So it's like, do I does it? I almost went Chromebook. But, but did you feel like okay, you're like I'm going to be CEO of this new company? Forty, I can't. It can't be forty nine PCs and and one or, or and a forty nine Macs and one PC. Yeah, it just, uh, yeah, well, the whole, like, literally all the technology in the entire yeah. office is completely set up to be, like, PC, so it's like, yeah. I would be, like, speaking a different language, and well, the reality is, is all, I almost went Chromebook, that actually, I, literally, that was a very, very solid run, runner-up, um, but I think occasionally there's going to be, need to be, like, an Excel file or something. That I'm, I'm proud of you, something. I'm proud of you that you got a Mac. That I, I yeah, good. we'll yeah. see if I like it yeah. in a couple months. Um, let's talk anyway. about, let's talk yeah. about PR. Yeah, PR. PR is hard. PR is hard. It's really hard. We talk about PR a lot, and we I do. actually think the reason the reason I like to talk to you about PR is because I actually don't think so. So forget that it's hard, but I think people don't care about PR enough. And like one lesson that I learned from you early on was, you. I think I texted you one day because I just felt like you were winning. Your company was just winning every freaking award. It was like yeah. best pens, best mugs, yeah. best culture, yeah. best recruiting. Yeah. And and there's an important lesson that I learned from that, which is like you said to me, dude. I want to win every award yeah. under the sun. Why would you not? Right. And I was like, oh, yeah. Because right. it can all be PR. It's just one more piece of exposure, right? So yeah. I think that, um, there, and you kind of go through phases. Like I felt like in building HubSpot early on. You were at HubSpot? It was, um, a short while, oh. just eight and a half short years. <laughs> um, and uh, I, day one, hadn't heard. you're like literally, oh, if four people will stand in the middle of Harvard Square and listen to our pitch, like I'm there. Right. If somebody will give me an award for best pen, I'm there, like right. I want it. Right. Then as Why you start you to become like legit yeah. and have more of a brand, you're a much bigger company, yeah. then you kind of don't want to win the best award for best pen. It's like, well, why are they winning the award for best True. pen? Like I thought they were so much bigger than best pen, you know? So it's like, you go through the phase. Um, so early on, like every, like 
I mean, literally any tiny little thing, just like do it. On the be on the best pen thing, so I, I'm reading, I just finished reading this book right now about this guy, Shep Gordon, mm -hmm. and he was the manager of Alice Cooper, and he found em Emeril Lagasse and all these people, yeah. and he was like the biggest uh, rock and roll manager back in the day. Insane, the whole book is basically like a PR thing. Right. He, he said that when he was like trying to have, he had all these up and coming acts, what he would do is he would try to get them seen with other people who are already big. Yeah. And he called it the flashbulb effect because yeah. they're like, I don't know who the hell that guy is. Right. But he just walked in with Mick Jagger. So yes. that person must be important. Totally true. And, and, I, and, I, and I shared that with our team at Drift because I think that's really important. It's like, who are the brands we want to be up with, right? And so yeah. if you win an award with yeah. Joe Schmo and yeah. those three other companies, people associate with you with that group. Versus like putting yourself in those conversations. But and it's even more than awards. Like we did this a lot at HubSpot as well, where we would try to do co-marketing, but we always called it like, like right. dating up, like yeah, dating yeah. above you your told social me that. class. All kind of your co-marketing was with like uh, Twitter in the early days. You guys did a huge web. We did a giant LinkedIn. thing with Facebook. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a giant, a huge amount of stuff with Facebook. And literally, Facebook was like a thousand times bigger than we were, and just the two logos together, it instantly confers credibility on your smaller brands because you're like, oh, like Facebook's doing some of them, they must be like legit. How it's the same thing as that celebrity thing. And that, and by the way, it's not just music, it's like all celebrities do that. Yeah. Like they try to get like, oh, I just want a couple lines on your new track yep. or I want to just be, you know, whatever. And yep. fashion brands do it. Yep. They just want somebody to like, they actually basically pay celebrities well, to like just do an Instagram yeah. photo with like whatever handbag you, or we're, whatever. We're big, we're big hip hop fans. One thing that happens in that world is people, you can pay for a, you can pay for a verse from a very, Famous rapper on your album, right? And that's how you do that. You get inserted. You have to yeah, you to do, do like the, do the opposite, right? How did yeah, you, yeah. But how did you reach out? Like, how, what was the pitch, right? Because you're pitching, you're reaching out to LinkedIn, say for example, and like you guys, you know, you're growing and you have a bunch of email addresses. How do you how do you get that? How do you get yeah. them to do that? I mean, you just you got to find an angle, right? So it's I mean, it's any type of selling, right? And um, so one of the things that we found was with most of these businesses, like Facebook, they typically had a very high churn rate with their small businesses mm -hmm. because they would go on, try some Facebook ads, they would get more web traffic, but like it wouldn't convert. And so the pitch yet. we made to them was like, hey, we're gonna do a lot of education around how you can actually like turn that Facebook traffic into real business. And if they do that, they're gonna spend more with you and stick around longer. So they, they so didn't Facebook, care that you yeah. didn't have 10 million people in your database at the time. Or well, I'd say the other thing is like, be, even though we were much smaller brands, because we had done so much online and built such a, a brand and had so much great content, we actually had like numbers that they were surprised that like it was still like a couple million, but they were like, oh, you, you have millions, right? And and by the way, and then you tell like, well, and by the way, these are a hundred times more valuable right. than consumer email addresses because they're businesses, yeah. right? And they were like, oh, and I was like, well, how big is your business database? And it was definitely like way bigger, but it wasn't like, you know, and ours was much more engaged too. So like we did a webinar with them. We actually drove more attendees to the webinar than they did. Um, now, it, once we started to talk about that, then they were like, "Oh, well, we're gonna crush we'll you." We'll do more, which is great. Yeah. And they just and they basically just gave themselves a bunch of free Facebook ads, yeah, and then crushed it. But like anyway, so anything you can do something with other brands, and it doesn't have to be companies. It can be um, it doesn't be companies even that are in your in your same industry. Yeah. Uh, we used to do a lot of stuff. We try to do stuff with like MIT. So you try to get like an MIT professor to do whatever, and it's like, oh, how's about doing something with MIT, right? Things yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, you just try to do things like that. Like at Cyber Reason, uh, we've launched a couple integrations and try to do a bunch of co-marketing with like Splunk, right? Splunk is huge, especially yep. in the IT and security space. Um, so do stuff with them. Um, anything you can do like that is interesting. We, you know, we did a, um, a movie. We actually made a, a documentary, documentary See? Uh, movie. Yeah, we should talk about that. No, no, I'm, um, this is what this is what we want to do. I'm dropping. I, I'm telling you. The big thing for like we want to do is imagine we change the playbook for video where yeah. we we do three movies a year right mm -hmm. or two movies a year and and we're working on that stuff all year round like I think I, lo I love the movie idea yeah. that was another one where I saw the movie and I got a message from DC instantly where's our movie so thanks for that oh oh well so <laughs> I stole that idea like I I don't have envision that many did that no. envision I stole yeah. it from envision I copied a lot of the playbook Jess Mayer um, who uh, worked at HubSpot she was at Envision app and uh, was part of that whole campaign. They did an amazing movie. And we just, we took very, very similar idea. It's called, it's the defendersmovie.com. And the cool thing about that though is like, if you're doing a movie, yeah. we literally, we got our filming crew into the Department of Homeland Securities, uh, to the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, their um, security operations center. So we're like, like, the computers that monitor, right. like everything that's happening nationally in, in terms of, we just told them we're making a movie. 
And they're like, right? sure. And the funny Come thing is, if you in. call them up and like, hey, this company, we're doing a video for our podcast or whatever, they'd be like, slam the door, wouldn't even talk right. to you. We're like, no, no, we're doing a, a, a documentary, documentary, right? And you're just like, uh, they just they invited us in. Um, yeah. New York Times, yeah. like they, like we interviewed their like head of security, like every, like literally. You Love just it. it's it's um, you, thinking about content in new ways is, is basically what you need to think about. You said something there that I, I, I it was really important that I don't think marketers do enough. Is you said I don't because I think everybody would say, oh man, you're so creative, you have all these good ideas. You don't have. <laughs> We're getting What's more. Up, man? Getting leads. Uh, we're getting leads. See? <laughs> Only a marketer can relate. Hi. <laughs> so you said, you said. It's so funny how the salespeople forget that, like, the company they were at before, they got zero leads. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, I, I only got. <laughs> I actually I o- said. I only got 10,000 leads this month. How am I supposed to hit my number? This is a show and for marketers. This like, is a show I, for marketers. You, so should, we can you, have you, this you know what you need? What? You need uh, to have a phone book on your desk. Mm. Okay? And anytime anybody in sales complains about leads, you're like, you want more leads? Here are the leads your last company <laughs> gave you, right? This is your last company's leads. Here's a fucking phone book. Actually, There's names in here. Go fucking call them, oh, right? Man. Or that's if you it. want the primo shit, that's like why you're here. This is I your trailer. Do Here's I, the intro. I used to do that. Can I tell you something? Sometimes my favorite. Cause, cause they, my they favorite. just forget. My favorite. My favorite sales reps. This is, I love all our sales reps here, Jeff. My favorite ones are the ones that come from companies where they like had no brand, yes. had no leads, yes. because they come here and they're like, "This is yeah. incredible." You know. Uh, 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 and you can use that in recruiting. We use that in HubSpot recruiting. Like you. The sales reps would be, they wish you wouldn't believe it. Like they would go, it was after two, three months on the job, a lot of them would come over and find me. They'd be like, so when you guys were recruiting me, you told me I wasn't going to have to cold call. And I actually didn't believe it. And they're like, I've closed, like I hit my number this month and I haven't cold called. And I was like, you're welcome. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is, this why this you, say, yeah. is this why you moved on from marketing? Because you have to deal with this? Anymore? What do you mean? No, no, no okay. I have no, so to deal with it on you, both sides. You said now. something important, which is like, I think everybody thinks, man, you got all these crazy ideas, super creative. You said, I don't have any original ideas. And I think that's really important because you, This is going to go, like, we're, we talk, we're both hip hop fans, right? right. Hip hop is like, there's originality in like every new track that yeah, comes out, but yeah. but most of that originality comes from like remixing right. a lot of old things. Or or most of right? the it's it, uh, most of the beats are from '70s soul, yeah. right? So right. Like there's something right. there. Or or that was then taken and then put into yeah. like a Public Enemy yeah. track in like the right. you know the like the late '80s that then somebody else is using now. Or like on Nas's new album, he is like heavy sampling from a track that Slick Rick did back in like '90 or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's 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 about yep. it's about either taking an idea that someone has done. Um, a long time ago and recycling it yeah. or something somebody's done in a different industry like looking at consumer and being like how could I adapt that for B2B is 100%. huge I was or a, take two ideas and put them together in a new way I was on, right? a, pan, I was on a panel yesterday with somebody who she she runs like digital marketing at Puma yeah. and their whole it was amazing their whole, they had they just launched a new campaign with like Carmelo Anthony and LeBron yeah. and that's the stuff that I want I'm interested in because I think everybody else in our space I'm a B2B marketer I think most people are going to look at what other B2B companies do yeah. I want to read I want to study like this guy Shep Gordon for example yeah. or or you know Steve Jobs and Apple is cliche but I don't think a lot of people copy what what they have done or yeah. what's happening in music and consumer I think there's so much to draw from inspiration because everything is all about people yeah. It's about getting people to do something. Same yeah. same in B2B. B2B yeah. is no different. Yeah. Um, and I just think people don't copy enough. Yeah. Copy. This is yeah. This is cop this series. Has is anyone copied. done videos before? I mean, is this a no. unique idea? This is like 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 there's no. there's uh, how many billions of videos that have been created, billions. right? But it's it's about yeah. I think it's about two, it's about tweaking things yeah. and then um, just executing really well. Yeah. Because that's the other thing, is like ninety seven percent of the videos out there. Like they suck because mm-hmm. they're not fun. They're not exciting. They're mm-hmm. not well edited. The audio sucks. Like whatever. Just doing something really well is yeah. actually also Some, differentiation. Something we say a lot, which is uh, we say innovate, don't invent, right? Which is like find something that already exists, innovate on top of that, and make it better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Back to PR. Funny, funny experience that yeah. I told you about, and you reflected back on me, which yeah. is when we were out there raising our Series C, which yeah. is sixty million dollars. Yeah. Sequoia led like you know strong brand right whatever i had a hard time pitching that as news i know a lot of i i actually got three responses i won't say the publications but three responses from some from from reporters that said sorry we don't cover anything under 100 million right 
I was like, wait. I know. What? The whole, it's funny because and I texted like, you, I was like, I can't get anybody to respond to me. I know, well, and I, and I told you that we had, I mean, we did a $100 million round at Cyber Reason, yeah. which we, we got a ton of coverage for. Mm -hmm. Wall Street Journal, yep. New York Times, yeah. like just great. But there was a top tier tech industry publication yeah. that yeah. didn't cover it. I got them to like, cover us. Yeah, I know, I know. I got them to cover but us. But did you get New York Times, Wall Street Journal? Damn. All right. DC's gonna text you. DC's gonna text you now. DC's gonna text you now. Oh wait, wait, no, no. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Yeah, I know, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know. What was that? I haven't gotten that yet. What was the question? That was good. That was good. That was good. Let's just put this here. You know what? You know what was great about this is they actually. So this column, this column that he was in, this is the corner office column. They actually, he was one of like the last three people, and then they they stopped doing it. Ended it. They ended, ended it. it, yeah. I think they actually, I think they right. just restarted it. Just so we gotta go get on there, record like, that Mike Volpe said I didn't get in the help well, us for get the in round, the New York Times. For the rounds, but, though. Yeah, for but the fundraising round, No, it's really easier. good. It's really good. The worst part about this, it's night really before, good. we go down to New it's York. Really good. We go down to New York. Yeah. I'm in a hotel room. Yeah. DC's in another hotel room. Go out to dinner, I start to feel like, uh-oh, something's not right. Okay. We had and to be, it wasn't just nerves. It wasn't just nerves. Okay. I wasn't nervous. I didn't have to do anything. I get to Instagram the whole thing, like, and hang out with DC at the New York Times. Like, I didn't have to do anything. Yeah, but but here's the thing: if you're the marketing guy and like the the executive that you book for that interview, if they screw it up, true. Like, it, or, it sets or, you or, way back because it means it's much harder to get future stuff. Or well, that. Or like, if this reporter flakes, you know, I didn't believe that it was going to be real until like, you know, because so many people flake, it happens. Oh, that right? guy's not going to flake. Not going to flake. New York Times is not going to. So flake. we go to New York. We get down the in New York. The article might not happen, but they won't flake. We get down in New York, go out to dinner. I'm feeling like, I'm feeling real weird. I'm up all night puking, every yeah. hour puking. And I have to be at the New York Times with DC yeah. at 9 a.m. Right. And I'm like, my body's cramping. Like it was horrendous food poisoning. And so I walk out like on, a, on the New York streets. I go to like uh, Rite Aid to get Pedialyte at seven in the morning. Right. And I kid you not, I am sitting at a table at a desk. I finally felt better. It was not good though. I'm sitting at a desk with Adam Bryant, the New York Times reporter, DC, and yeah. me. Yeah. And below me is a is a glass of Pedialyte that I keep sipping the entire time at the New York Times. I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. Wow. Luckily, it worked yeah. out. The interview was. The other amazing. thing that happens when you do that, uh, and you're you're a parent, then you get home, and the other parent is like, Oh, well, you must be really well rested from your business trip. <laughs> That where the kid didn't keep you up all night, right? right? And you're like, actually, right. it was it was right. completely the opposite. Right. And then like, right. and then you get it when you get home too. I remember yeah. it was like three months, <laughs> three months after Annie was born, I had to do a bunch of travel for Drift. I was in San Francisco for like uh, two weeks at different times. Yeah. And it was like after t you know, Annie was two months old, so we're not sleeping. It was the best week ever. I missed Annie and my wife so bad, but yes. I'm sleeping in the middle of a king size bed in a hotel, getting eight yeah. hours of sleep. No one night. kicking you in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else do I want to talk about? So PR hard to get. Um, PR is I, why I, I say the, the big thing with PR is like the fundraising driven PR yeah. is kind of like that. That has jumped the shark. That error is over. And li literally, like when you have trouble yeah. getting coverage for a hundred million dollar round. Yeah. And literally, the month we announced ours, there were like five other hundred million dollar plus rounds. Yeah, it's and just like and you can't control. So it. it used to be like a benefit of fundraising was like you got a PR boost. It's much less so. So like, yeah. not that that's ever a good reason just to raise yeah. money, but like it's just um, yeah. You got to wrap. You got to wrap it up I with something else now. I would try to tie it around something else. You like got to combine a, it with maybe something. Maybe there's a big yeah. hire you're making or right. a product you're a launching. New CEO, something. A new CEO. Right. That was pretty good. You did a good yeah. job with we that. We did okay. But did okay. I, I actually think I th something I talk about a lot is like I actually think the landscape for what PR is has changed also. Like, yeah. I'm yeah, more, yeah, yeah. like, of course, there's the logos, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Yeah. But, like, for us, right, we sell to sales and marketing people. For me, PR is, like, I want to be on everybody who has a podcast about marketing. Yeah. I want to be on that person's podcast. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Or, there's more of a micro strategy. And also, like, it's kind of tied into social media, too. Like, if you publish your own thing. Yeah. And then tons of people promote that and share it on LinkedIn or Twitter, whatever, mm -hmm. then that's also PR. Like, mm -hmm. how is it not PR? For it's sure. just, like, what the media is has changed, for right? Sure. Um, I want to go inside. Let's go inside our text messages a little bit, which is oh, we're we've gonna, been talking. So we're gonna like do some deep cuts. We've here? been talking a lot about. Don't we're you thinking, give away the idea? We're thinking about launching. No, hell no. We're, we've been thinking about launching a series called Text with Volpe. I mm -hmm. don't know if anybody would, would watch that, but um, um, we've been talking a lot about hiring. Yeah. And one of the things you've been kind of like helping me work on is we talked a lot about like. As a as a first time leader or manager, it can be easy to to default to like hiring people who are more junior and you have more experience, and that's just a natural th thing, right? Where like yeah. I think something you learned, which you taught me a lot about, is like hiring up, 
hiring yeah. people with more experience than you, right. who are better than you. How do you how do you do that? Though? Yeah, so so new managers often like they come in and like I'm a manager and they're like and it's easier to hire people that are way more junior than you because they're more likely to like look up to you yep. and you can like tell them what to do more and it's more like it, it it's an easier management job to do that. It's right. an easier hiring job. It's an easier recruiting job. It's right. all those things, yep. right? Yep. Um, but if you really want to be an exceptional manager, yep. right? Yep. Um, you want to try to hire people that are actually better than you, yep. right? And you sh you need to embrace that as a company culture and as like a manager. Um, and just like as, as a CEO, you would hopefully want to have people in every functional role that are the world's most amazing people at that, mm. that even have like some runway ahead of them that could be CEO someday. That's a great, right? it's that's like, it's a like great both way those to, things. That's a great like, way to flip that, right? right. It's like you, if you run marketing, changing your mindset from like, I am the CEO of this marketing thing, yeah. right? A CEO of, it wouldn't be a good strategy if as the CEO of Drift, right, DC hired, if he was the best person at sales, if he was the best person at marketing, if he was the best person at right. customer success. Yeah. So right. that's a really yeah. interesting way. So, so if you have a team, yeah. it's like, you know, and, and you have maybe, in a, if you're running a whole marketing team, you've yeah. got a demand gen person, you've got a content person, brand, yeah. product marketing, whatever. Yeah. Like, each you should want, should each be. of them should be far better at you at that thing for sure, yeah. and frankly, hopefully more experienced than you and like brings like more to the table and it kind of rounds out this whole team. How do you, like it just what was your what was your pitch, right? What was your pitch for selling somebody on that, right? Yeah, so I think you gotta you gotta do like you're the way to think about it is that um, everyone in the world like I had coffee yesterday with somebody who was like really junior, um, three years of marketing experience. And most people on paper would be like, oh well that entire coffee was about you teaching them something. Mm. Um, or maybe you recruiting them or whatever, mm -hmm. but I actually, in almost every conversation, there's something that that person knows that I don't know, right? right? Because he's deeper in the weeds of a bunch of tools or has seen different things, worked at different companies, whatever. There's something in his head that I don't know. Mm. And so like I can learn from literally anyone, I right? Love that About something. Yeah. Uh, and I know like you guys right. are big on the learning mindset yeah. here at, at Drift, so like I think that makes sense. So it's the same thing when you're recruiting. So it's sort of like, okay, even if this person has 20 more years of marketing experience than you have, there's something that you know that they don't know, and right. they can learn about that stuff from you. Right. And so, you know, it, depending which company I've been at and which job, it's always like you're pitching the person, yeah. like, there's things that I don't know that you don't know, and I'm also not going to micromanage you on the things that you know more about than I do. And by the way, this is about, like, putting together a tremendously awesome and amazing team and just selling them on the opportunity I, of the I company. love that. that that's, like, like, it, yeah. that's the best lesson in that. I'm obviously we've talked about so I'm not reacting the same way but that's like the eye-opening thing is yeah. like how can you put the right pieces of the puzzle together where one plus one is going to equal three as yeah. opposed to continuing to hire that way yeah it's it's kind of like a little bit like in like in sports there's sometimes these stars that want to be like the center of attention for sure and by far the best person on the team for sure and then there's the other ones that take like maybe a little bit of like a discount to make some room in the salary cap so like and there's going to be other people that might share the spotlight with them yeah. but the whole team is better and that's like the mentality you need I mean to have. we talk about like look at what uh, Kevin Durant said I could continue to be the star in Oklahoma City and never win anything right or go join this group where there's five stars and what yeah. happened they won back to back right right, right. Um, that's and, and but obviously that's also not the right fit for some people you have to get that person to buy in and want to be part of the bigger thing if they don't want to be part of the bigger vision that's not going to work either yeah, it, and, it, and it's only going to work in, bo in both cases if both the leader and the person that you're hiring have a lot of humility, yeah. right? Yeah. If, 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 if you're not humble, like, that's absolutely, like, not going to work. For sure, right? for sure. Uh, but that's, and again, humility, I think, is an important quality in most of the yeah. most successful teams. All right, we got we got to wrap. I don't know, I want to wrap with the last topic, which is even though you're, this is today's, act, actually, as we're filming this, today's your last official day as I'm like officially a CMO, a CMO for only like six more hours. Which Gonzalo and I were talking about this. We were like, is this gonna break? Do we want to do this? What do you mean? Do no, because I'm a CMO. CMO? Do no, we I am have a, a CEO on the show? But I am a CMO. It's a fundamental thing. I, I am a CMO. I don't know. I'm a CMO. Uh, okay. I mean, no. you can put it up for six <laughs> hours and take it down, but like, like currently at filming, <laughs> legally, like I am a CMO. So you're I think right. we're, we're just under the wire. It is 56. You're it's right. 11, so you're it's right. 5 p.m. call it, whatever. So you're like right. six more hours. Right. Okay. I'm a CMO. In all seriousness, what... It will be hard for me not to be a CMO, even five years from now. Yeah, but right? but I also think... Like, I think, was, was it... Um, who was it? Was it Lemkin that tweeted something recently about um, um, the best CMOs know that the CEO is actually the CMO yes, and they like embrace that. that? You yeah. retweeted that. Yeah. I think I retweeted or commented yeah. on it. And like it's very true. Like take take yeah. Mark Benioff, yeah. right? The, the you know news alert. The CMO of Salesforce.com for the past 
18 years 100%. is actually Mark Benioff. 100%. You know Not, and I know a lot of the people that have gone yeah. through and had that CMO title there yeah. and they're phenomenal people, yeah. but Benioff is the CMO of Salesforce.com. You know who's never had a CMO? Who has never, who? who? Apple. Apple has never had a CMO, right? There's always been they a VP probably of need one now. They probably, they probably need, one, need now, one now, for sure. But right, Jobs was the CMO yeah. of Apple. But, for but sure. also, that's different, right? Like, there's different. And it types doesn't mean of, you're doing well. Then, and it doesn't mean you're doing all the tactical stuff. But like, like the visionary, the like, like out there kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. That's good. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Well, there's different types of CEOs. People also. People over there, yeah. you know what they're doing? Smashing the gong. Making me money. They're making you money. Me money. You? I get shares, man. I'm oh, all yeah. up in this. Shout out. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What do you think prepared you as a, as a CEO? That's a good sound. As a CEO, what? As a CMO, what prepared you most to be a CEO? Or what, what's the, what are the most transferable so it's, things? It's, yeah. Outside so outside of like um, brand, right? Like, it's interesting because it's actually I think um, it, becoming the world's best CMO is actually that alone will not make you a CEO. Right, so let's like kind of pause on that for a minute, like because that that's important to know. Yeah. You're gonna need more experience with other parts of the business, yeah. and I'll point out like two things: some experience with sales. Yep. So I had an opportunity at first of all at HubSpot, worked very closely with Robert over yep. all the years yep. in there in the trenches with the sales reps. Yep. Didn't report to me, but like a lot of detailed yep. experience working. Fun with fact them. about him, by the way, great looks great on about the golf Mark course. Robert, yeah, great dress, great yeah. outfit, yeah. Average golfer, but looks yeah. looks tremendous in a golf yeah. outfit. It's wonderful to play with him, oh, uh, but yeah. he's not the ringer you bring in to win the tournament. Correct. Yeah. Looks like yeah. the ringer. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. yeah totally. Okay. So. Um, a lot of detailed experience with sales. Yeah. I had an opportunity at Cyber Reason where I ran the BDR team. So Ooh. we had about 20 BDRs, and I had actually had a small number, like like four inside sales closers as mm -hmm. well. So I got mm -hmm. more experience kind of like managing on the sales side there. Mm -hmm. That was valuable. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'll point out that I think helped me over time go from CMO to CEO is um, a deep understanding of the finances of the business and all the metrics. Right. And I actually put that way back to my first job out of college, doing two years of investment banking, living in Excel, right. taking accounting classes right. as part of the training for that job, Understanding PNL, breaking down, I mean, stuff, I, yeah. I, during that two year period, I probably read, uh, you know what, that's a hundred weeks, I probably read four, I probably read 500 plus either prospectuses or 10K like annual reports, going through all the financial statements, really understanding the business, yeah. getting understanding of like how do investors value a business, yeah. understanding the capital structure of a business. Do I want to raise equity? Do I want to raise debt? Like all those things, super important as a CEO of a growing business to understand all those things. So um, it's a combination if of you're if you're working just, way up on the marketing side, yeah. right? Yeah. And you want to be CEO someday. Yeah. I, you need to make sure you dig in on the sales side and on like the finance yep. side because the finance is like the language, like the operational language of the business and understanding all that, like I understanding like how is the stock valued and if I sell stock now to these investors or these people, whatever. So it makes like, you a better CMO because you have a yeah. full understanding of the business. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. It makes you better at your job at any time to understand all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and I would argue every employee should 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 have that understanding yeah. and work on it. So like. It, you need you need to be broader than your individual role to kind of rise to yeah. that next level, and, yeah. and that's helpful. So it's, it, it's really interesting that I actually think a lot of like my hopefully ability to be a great CEO now goes way way back, you know, twenty plus years to my first job. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Thank cool. you. Always a pleasure. We're out of here. <laughs>